So the first section of the textbook concerns the unit circle. Um, in terms of an equation, the unit circle is x squared plus y squared equals one, but that's not really uh, so important for our purposes. I mean, what's important for our purposes is what the unit circle is, which forgive my rather mediocre drawing, but the unit circle is a circle on the Cartesian plane centered around the origin with a radius of one. And the reason the unit circle is so important, I mean, I suppose ultimately it's a little arbitrary. You could use different circles for what we're going to do, but the unit circle is going to be used to define the sine and the cosine, two very important definitions from trigonometry. And we'll get to that a little later in, in a different video. For now, um, the textbook wants to define a wrapping function. So we're going to look at the unit circle and we're essentially going to think about walking around the unit circle. We are going to start here and we're going to walk around the unit circle. We could walk counter clockwise, or we could walk clockwise. So in this direction, or in this direction. And we walk some distance. Um, so this is a unit circle. It has a circumference of two pi. So if we start here and walk all the way around so that we wind up back where we started, we'd have walked a distance of two pi units. And this wrapping function the textbook is going to define, it's going to take numbers as its input. And we're going to start again at the point one comma zero at the rightmost point on the unit circle and walk this distance. So in this particular case, if we have one as our input, we're going to start here and we are going to walk in this direction, and we're going to walk counterclockwise because one is positive. So we'll walk a distance of one, and we'll end up at some point. This point, like any point, will have an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. So we'll talk um, in another video about how I got these numbers, but in particular, if you start here and walk one unit counterclockwise, you end up at about 0.54 comma 0.84. 
So I talked about a wrapping function. A function has inputs and outputs. So there's a function that's taking the number one, and we're used to the inputs and outputs both being numbers. But here, the input is a number. The output is a point. And this wrapping function can take any number as an input. So positive numbers work, well, just like in this example. You um, start here and you move counterclockwise a positive distance. Maybe you have Seven as an okay, let's try that again. Maybe you have an input of seven. And if you have an input of seven, you'll start here, you'll walk around the circle, you'll get all the way around, and then you'll go some additional distance and wind up there. And that point then has an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. I can figure those out for you if you give me a second. There, rounding to two decimal places. 0.75, 0 0.66. Again, we'll see how I get these numbers a little later in the course. So an input of seven gives this point. as an output. You could you can have negative inputs as well. And I sort of touched on this. I said back here that we were going counterclockwise because our input is positive. If we have a negative input, We start at the same place. We still start here and we walk clockwise around the circle. Uh, sorry, didn't mean to do that. I'm and if we go with three units. Um, clockwise, we end up at this point, uh, negative 0.99, negative 0.14. So this function sends negative three to this. Uh, sorry, fighting with Zoom a little. That's basically it for this section of the textbook. Um, I guess the other thing the textbook touches on is the fact that because a unit circle has a circumference of 2 pi, Inputs that are multiples of pi tend to be nice. So, for example,
This wrapping function takes pi over two and it sends it to a very nice point. No rounding this time. And that's because if we have the unit circle, um, this point here is the point zero comma one. And if the entire circle is, is two pi, um, so if starting at this point and we go around two pi units and we wind up back at this point, then pi over four is a fourth of that. Sorry, pi over two is a fourth of that. So we travel a fourth of the distance and we wind up there. Um, as always, I should say um, this video is not intended as uh, a replacement. You should read the section of the textbook. That's just that's just life in an online course. We're going to be doing a lot of sort of reading and self-study, but I think this video um, has pretty much summarized the, the most important important features of this first section, uh, the unit circle.